Hey guys, um, I have something to share with you guys. I had a dream last night, or more likely this morning, um, when I got up and looked at the time. It was 3.30 a.m. this morning, so excuse my tiredness, but I am tired. I didn't sleep good last night. But um, yesterday I was watching, I don't know if you guys saw, uh, know who Anita Fuentes is. Um, but that is a sister who has a ministry, Open Your Eyes People, um, and uh, her ministry is about tying in uh, current events with Bible prophecies, etc. And um, she has callers that will call in on a certain day, I don't know if it's on Wednesdays, anyway, they call in and they share the dreams that um, they believe the Lord has given them. And as I was listening to the dream, I, I just looked up and I said, Lord, um, I don't know if I said this inwardly or outwardly, but I, I, I said, Lord, you know, I know you've been giving me dreams. I know you've been, you know, talking to me about preparing with food and water, you know, and sometimes because we see so many people who just aren't in tune with that. It makes you feel and think that maybe you're a little, you know, <laughs> not in tune with the Holy Spirit and so I said Lord you know if, if if this in fact is you and you're warning us Lord I I need you to speak to me again I need you to give me I, I need you to do tell me more like tell me something and so this was last night or yesterday afternoon um I will share what the dream was and it all started at and I have my notes guys I had to write that I woke up at 3 30 in the morning and I had to write it down uh, to remember as much as possible so that I don't forget it um, and and it all started in in in, in the pastor's um, house I believe we were in his house um, this pastor I know him he's from up north um, someone who's very well uh liked and respected um and so anyway we were in i think his house his wife wasn't there her mother wasn't there they were out shopping and some other people from my family was out shopping but we were kind of like in, in in his house i think it, it was like a party it was a gathering and um i remember that there, there was it was myself the pastor and 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 another brother and um we're kind of hurtled in a circle you know with our arms over each other and over the shoulders and i'm trying to get you guys to visualize and um so our heads are pretty much kind of like almost touching one to the other you know kind of like when you're in a team and you guys hover down and and, and do the team thing um the pep talk well we're doing that but what he's saying and I can't remember his words but it, it, it was not proper words um it was almost flirtatious that's how I felt like he was being flirtatious um at one point he even started to um whine at his waist and that means for you guys who don't know what that means that means that he started to move his waist like in a circular motion um, and, and while he was saying some improper things, and I remember that in inwardly, I was like, "What in the world is he doing?" But outwardly, um, I was laughing, and then I said inwardly to myself, "Let me see how far he's going to take this." And so, um, that went on to um a joke between the three of us, um. And I'm going to skip some of these little detail stuff. But I know um, suddenly um, we're sitting like on a picnic table, a rectangular table. And and when I say we, he's not there now. Um, he's not at that table. But it's myself and some other um, people. And I start to see... Uh, military men in their uniforms but they were veterans they weren't they weren't um I, I had the sense that they were veterans although they were in their uniforms and the uniforms weren't crisp the uniforms even themselves they looked um worn out 
and um, little by little, we just kept getting more and more at the table. And um, I said, I said out loud um, at the table. I said out loud. I said, "Man, there's so many military men here that I don't even know if I should stay or just run for it." Like that's the feeling that I had, you know. Should I even be sitting here? Um, suddenly, that changed to me being sitting like on a wooden uh, um, beach chair, one of those low ones. And, and I was digging the legs into the sand and, it, and, and the legs broke off. And all these little detailed things may not mean anything, but it's part of the dream, so I'm sharing it. Um, I'm looking at my notes. I, mean, I want to make sure I don't forget anything. So um, the legs broke off. And then, um, in between scenes, I remember um, kind of being standing by uh, uh, a bar area, not a club bar area, like a home bar area. And and again, because it was like some kind of event. And um, someone coming to the door that I knew, I I, I know, and I believe it might have been my one of my niece's father. I'm not sure, but I knew the man. And I knew him in real life. I just can't remember who it was. But he was walking with a man, with another partner. Like, that was his partner. And um, then the scene jumps to that I'm sitting on a sofa in the living room area. But I'm able to look outside. And it's dark out. Like, I can see out, but it's dark out. And I see my brother, my oldest out of the two boys, um, coming in in one of those uh, um, golf carts. And he is just coming so fast. And I can see the terror in his face. And his face was overshadowed with, like, like um, you know, darkness, dark shadow. But at the same time, like, um, the red, um, red lights, like the emergency lights, I can see it on his face. And he's just, the, the, the look that he had in his face was a terror. And so he, he, he came running in, hurry up, hurry up, we must go, we must go. And instantly I just knew, don't ask no question, go grab your baby. And, and, and the baby happens to be my granddaughter, which somehow was my daughter. And I went and I grabbed her and I grabbed the bag that was already pre-made for her. And I was looking for my purse, and I kept telling my sister, my older sister, you know, where where's my purse? Because they were they had been playing in the dream. They 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 were playing a trick on me, and they had hid my purse. And I'm like, please, where's my purse? Where's my purse? Let's go. We gotta go. Don't ask those questions. Just grab the stuff and let's go. Go grab them. And so she grabbed her kid, and we all ran outside. At this point, I no longer see the pastor. Um, the pastor's no longer in the picture. Um, his family is no longer in the picture. Um. But we all run, run outside with my brother, and, and, and that was my, my husband, myself, uh, my kid, who happens to be my granddaughter, my sister, her kid, one of her kids. And um, when we run outside, guys, I literally, I looked around and shocked. Because what I saw when I looked to my left and I looked to my right, it was, I saw nothing. I was in New York and, and, and I knew it was like the New York buildings. Um, so I'm not going to say I was in New York, but definitely it was a city. And I saw what was um, in the city. It, it was in the city and what I saw, the people were being evacuated i mean not by anyone they themselves i saw nothing but families and people bringing their stuff carrying boxes throwing things out the window like taking whatever they were able to take and they were bringing boxes of stuff out into the streets i mean the the, the, the streets were filled with families and people bringing their stuff out of their apartments and instantly i just knew i said oh my gosh baby look it had started i told my husband it has begun it has begun and i had the sense in my spirit right then and there like in my dream i had the sense that the government had took total control like uh uh, uh of every um real estate every building every house like they they took control of it and were asking people 
that they had to evacuate. Like I knew this in the dream. So guys, I don't know what all this means. All I know is that I, I told the Lord, you know, Lord, if, if, if this is all really of you, I, I, I need you to speak more to me. And then again, he gives me another dream this morning at 3.30 this morning. Um, you know, I was just talking to another sister the other day about the symbolism of, of the 33, you know, or the 333. And so I'm going to look into that a little more um, and find out what this whole three thing is all about. But guys, you know, I would love to believe that we're not going to go through anything. I would love to believe that we're going to be raptured and, and, and we're not going to have to go through what's going to what's coming you know but I, I don't I, not only do I not see it in the Word of God I keep getting dreams from the Lord that tells me differently and I respect whoever believes that 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 we're gonna be caught away amen and I hope so but you know what I'm gonna tell you guys like I said yesterday in my post I'm preparing for the worst and hoping for the best and I really pray that you guys get your houses in order, get your hearts in order. Listen to me, get your hearts in order. I have so I have a lot more um, um, Christians struggling, reaching out to me than I actually have new converts. Okay, and I know that's part of my calling, or, 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 or a big chunk of my calling is to restore the body of Christ. Listen, guys, please. Get before God and ask Him for yourself. There's no reason why He wouldn't tell you. Okay? I love you guys and I really pray that you guys come to the place of just surrendering and submitting every area of your life. Because at the, bottom, the bottom line is that all that stuff that you're concerned about now, all that stuff that you're fighting about, all that stuff that you're chasing after, it's not going to even matter soon. It's not going to matter. That man that you saw have said that, you're going to want to love him to death when you're going through. You're going to want him there with you. That woman that you keep fighting and complaining about, you're going to want her there with you. Those children that you feel like you can't get along, you're going to want them there with you. So get over it and ask God to help you to get over it and forgive and make the phone calls that you have to make. Listen to me. And I'm speaking even to myself. Not that I have anything against my siblings, but I know that, that there's a war between us. And, and I'm making it my business today. I'm making it my business. I'm going to reach out. It doesn't mean that they're going to accept me. They may not accept me. But I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure I reach out to my brothers and my sisters. Because when, 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 when crap hits the fan, I don't want to think about that I didn't get a chance to fix anything with my brothers and sisters. And I love them, and I wish they were in my life, and for, you know, whatever reasons they're not. But I'm going to make it my business, whether I'm right or wrong, doesn't matter. I'm going to make it my business today to reach out to them. Make it your business today to reach out to those that you are upset with, to those that maybe you're not even upset at them, but they're upset at you. Because that's my case with my, my siblings, okay? I'm not upset at them, but they're upset at me. Okay, I have nothing against them, but and I don't know if they have anything against me, but it does definitely feel that way. But you know what? It doesn't matter whether I'm right or wrong. I'm going to reach out to them today. I bless you guys in Jesus' name. Please wake up and just ask the Lord and He will speak to you. Bye-bye.